Welcome to the calculator tutorial. This is a guide on how to use the Texas uh, Instruments BA2 Plus for your CFA exam. The calculator is uh, crucial in your exam experience. Um, there will not actually be as many numbers questions as you probably think um, the, in the actual exam. Uh, the learning that we do is very designed about understanding those types of things in the actual exam. They ask more questions about higher and lower and ups and down. There will be some numbers questions and crucially those questions will take you longer than average questions because there's a large amount of data to be put in. Um, so efficiency is the key with these questions. You want to make sure that you get them right obviously because the calculator does a lot of them you just got to know the inputs. The key is to get them right and to get them right as quickly as possible. Um, what's very important all the way through your studies is that you get better and better at using the calculator and always thinking about how could I have got this question done quicker, how could I have got um, uh, them, them right more often and those types of things. So it's all to do with practice. It's definitely a good idea to maybe work through this tutorial a couple of times at different points through your study. Always practicing questions. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is make sure our calculator is set up correctly. When you get the Texas Instruments BA2 Plus, it has, it has certain factory settings, some of which are not exactly going to be what we want um, uh, the calculator to necessarily be doing. These are personal preferences, okay? So however you want the calculator um, set up is up to you, okay? So we've got our calculator there. The first thing we want to do is set the correct amount of decimal places. Now, everyone is different on this, okay? Um, we suggest that the best thing to do is to leave it with five decimal places. To change the number of decimal places, you hit second. If you look where the second is, up the top left-hand part of the calculator, there, that's where it says second, the yellow button. The second button gets you to all of the yellow writing on the calculator. So if you look above the uh, decimal point down the bottom, above the decimal point down here, it says format, okay, in yellow. Whenever you hit the button second, you're getting to all of the yellow writing on the calculator. So for example, above button eight, it says stat. So that's where you'll go later on when we're looking at our statistics. So second and, and the decimal point format gets us into the format menu. So second and decimal point, and then your calculator says des equals, and there'll be a number there, okay? So you can force the calculator to give you a certain amount of decimal places no matter what. So if we hit five and hit enter, as it says on the page, you'll notice your calculator changes straight away to 5.00000. So you've got the, um, a number at the start, and then you've got five decimal places. Your calculator should have started with a factory setting of two decimal places, which isn't enough for some questions. If you then clear out of that, okay, and then just do uh, one divided by seven, you'll notice that it gives you 0 0.14286. There is obviously more decimal places to that, but it's forcing it to give you five. If you do one divided by two, okay, it just gives you 0 0.5, but it doesn't just say 0 0.5, it says 0 0.50000, okay? Now, if you set this to nine, Okay, if you set it to nine, it will always give you as many as necessary. Okay, so if we try that, if you hit second full stop and hit nine enter, okay, you'll see it gives you no decimals. If you do one divided by seven there, it fills up the screen with decimal places. If you do one divided by two, it only says 0 0.5. Personal preference, you definitely should not leave it as two decimals. So go back and put it into five decimals if you like. Four decimals is fine, okay, um, uh, however you like your calculator set up. Okay, the second thing it has here is set to our mathematical precedence. You might remember this from when you did uh, math in high school. Um, this is through with how the calculator does uh, um, uh, its mathematical functions in different orders. So does it do plus first? Does it do everything just left to right? Or does it do brackets first? So the easiest way to check what we have with this, do 2 plus 3 times 5. Now if you look at that formula, 2 plus 3 times 5, we want our calculator to do the 3 times 5 first and then add 2. So this should equal 17, should equal 17, okay? What, what the calculator's factory setting, it will do the two plus three first equals five, then multiplied by five, so it'll equal 25. So quickly check in your calculator, two plus three times five, see what it comes out at. Now, I, you probably want to have this equal 17. We want the calculator to do those brackets first. Everyone's different though. If you want to change that, you hit second format. Now when you hit second format, it says des equals, and then hit the up arrow. When you hit the up arrow, it will either say CHN or AOS, okay? CHN or AOS. If, your calculator is, if, you were, if you were getting 25, your calculator will say CHN. 
If you were getting 17, your cap code says AOS. Most people are going to want to prefer AOS. To toggle between CHN and AOS, you hit second enter when it's on the screen. And if you do that a couple of times, you'll see it goes between CHN and AOS. Leave the calculator in AOS and then go and try 2 plus 3 times 5 again and it should give you 17. The number of payments per year, you can see payments per year above the IY button. You can see it just here. Above the IY button, it's got P slash Y. Hit second IY there, and it should have payments per year equal to one. Um, this might be um, uh, useful if they have any question where you're calculating monthly mortgage payments and stuff like that. You could um, calculate the payments per year to 12. The factory setting is one. It should already be one. I would leave it at one. If you're going to do any question that involves monthly payments, what you're normally going to do is just change your end to be months, the interest rate to be a monthly interest rate. Then you put in your payment or whatever it is that you're calculating and just do it that way. We'll see more of those as we go on. Okay, and then lastly, before you do any time value of money um, calculations, the time value of money calculations are those gray buttons across the middle of your calculator. These are your time value for money calculations, your bond calculations are all going to be on there. Whenever you're doing any of those questions, you have to remember to clear your time value first. Okay, um, there might be a question where you're entering the N, the IY, the payment, and you're trying to calculate a um, uh, future value. So there was nothing in that calculation requiring a present value. And if you don't put a present value in, okay, it might be that there was a present value in from the last time you did a calculation, and then you're going to get it wrong. Okay, um, so hitting second FV, and you'll see above FV it says clear time value of money right there. Okay, hitting second FV before you start any calculation, I normally do it at the end of a calculation as well, is going to be something to avoid making a silly error. Remember, you might be thinking, well, you know, that's not going to make me get a wrong answer in the CFA exam. I'm just going to get a weird result and do the question again. You have to remember that the CFA Institute know which exam you're doing. They know that question 62 comes after 61. They could have deliberately done question 62 leaving in the last present value, okay, getting you a different number, and they've put that in as one of the answers. And the difficulty is once you've seen an answer and you have it in your calculator and you can see it as one of the answers, you want to put that down. So that's setting up your calculator. Um, uh, some of you will buy a second calculator just before you sit the exam. It's worthwhile remembering you should set that up. Don't wait to the exam day and then realize, oh my god, I haven't set it up. And also, in the, in the event that you take the battery out of the calculator, a lot of people replace the batteries in these, which I'd like to stress, there's no need to do that. The batteries last for a long time. You should go to the exam with two calculators if you're a risk-averse individual. If you change the battery, if you take the battery out, the calculator goes back to factory settings. So it's important that you remember how to set this up just in case you need to do that during the exam. Okay, the memory function on the calculator, you'll notice down the left-hand side of the calculator, it has the buttons STOW and RCL, just above the clear button down the left-hand side. STOW is store, okay, and RCL is recall, okay. Now, if you're someone, let's say you're doing a long calculation, okay, so they give you an example here, but not everyone is comfortable using this calculator to do long calculations, so um, you're going to learn your two asset risk formula, which looks like this. If you haven't got up to this in your study yet, don't worry yet. This is one of the formulas I need to know for the exam. Some people are able to do this in one go in their calculator. What a lot of people do is calculate this and then write it down, and then calculate this and then write it down, and then calculate this and then write it down, and then add one, two, and three together, and this could take you some time. What you could do is calculate this and then put it into button one, calculate this and put it into button two, calculate this and put it into button three, and then you just have to go recall one plus recall two plus recall three to get it out. So let's look at how we do this. Let's, they, they get you to do a really easy one at the top. Two plus 3.5 equals to 5.5. So two plus 3.5 equals, sure enough, it's 5.5, and I wish to store this. So if you hit stow one, as it tells us to do, okay, and then clear the calculator, get, get out of that. If you hit recall one, 5.5 comes back. Okay, so that's pretty nice. Okay, that, I don't think we had any trouble remembering 5.5, but if this was, you know, like 63.489, or what, which was part of the calculation at the bottom, then this is obviously going to be a quicker way of bringing it back. Very handy for questions where you have to do multi stages. We're going to see some of those coming up. Um, just as a, let's say that you you've stored a few numbers in there and you've forgotten where you've stored them. If you see um, above the zero button, it says mem. Okay, if you hit second, mem. 
Okay, so if you hit second mem, your calculator will say M0. And if you use the up and down arrows there, you can go from between M0 to M9. And if you go to M1 using the up and down arrows, M1 it says 5.5. So this is a useful way for storing stuff in your calculators. Once you're in that memory function, okay, you need to clear it before you actually go into the exam. When you're in it, if you hit second, clear work. Okay, so second and then clear work, which is down on the left-hand side of the calculator that clears everything from the memory. Okay, as it says there, if you hit second and then answer A and S, it's always going to bring up whatever the last answer in the calculator was. So let's say you've calculated something and then uh, you've moved on, you've done something else, then second answer, if you hit it now, it will say 5.5 because that was the last calculation that we did the last time we hit the equals button.